Play part D. Hello, once again, this is Jeff of Tau Flater Mouse. Today we have something I've been waiting to shoot forever, the Ball Flesh Sauveste. Even though this looks like it came directly out of the world of Bioshock, these are made in France. Who knew France made shotgun slugs? And why does France get six shells in a box when we only get five? What's up with that? As you can see, this is a thin, stabilized, discarding Sabo shotgun round. Over the last year, I have emailed both the company that makes these and a distributor in the United States that sells these, asking them for a few samples so I could demonstrate these for you, and they flat out ignored me. Finally, a viewer from France, a guy named David, generously offered to send these to me. Without David's generosity, we wouldn't have been able to do this video, so I definitely thank him. He has a YouTube channel called Upsweet. 07. Although at first glance the Salveste may appear to look like some kind of a plumbing fixture, while the nose of the Salveste is made out of lead, the rest of it is made out of a, probably a nylon or some kind of high strength plastic. Now this is comprised of three main components, the two Sabo pieces, then the main projectile which is actually made out of two different materials, both nylon and lead. And it's really quite a retro futuristic design. And when you look at a normal shotgun slug, it just has a gas piston which pushes it down the barrel. Very simple. Now if you tried to do the same thing with the Savast, the slug would just crush under its own weight from the tremendous G-shock from being shot. So what they did was design the Sabo to be the gas seal also. The lugs on the Sabo distribute the force evenly down the entire length of the dart. So when you shoot it, essentially the dart is being hold down the barrel rather than being pushed from behind. So the Savest is less like a normal factory shotgun slug and more like a military Sabo round used in tanks like the Abrams. Okay, let's go out and see how these function. Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's look the Francais. Wow, I saw it splash out in the water out there. Okay, we see the Savest traveling along at around 1400 feet per second. Very, very flat trajectory, high speed, high penetration, just blasted right through all that ballistic gel. Now, ballistic gel is not an exact representation of a of flesh or anything like that. Normally this uh, slug, when it hits a wild boar or whatever, it will mushroom out, smash up, and deform quite a bit. That's pretty accurate and impressive performance out of a smooth bore shotgun, which these are designed to be shot from. So uh, that's pretty much where we were aiming. That's a, that's a very accurate round, in and out, nice clean hole, tore, huh, this, tore yeah. this guy a new one. We I need, have a, a need menage, to make some new ones. A menage of gummies here. They all folded over on each other here. Did it? I wonder if it went through that last big old block there. Yeah, it looks like a new cavity in there. A big old giant cavity. Could be. Okay, ready. 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 Each gummy bear is about three inches thick. By spacing them out, we can see if the projectile will maintain its trajectory straight through, and it definitely did. Filmed from the side at 21,000 frames per second, we can see that the Savest kind of resembles a bullet going through gel. But unlike a bullet, which can often yaw and change direction once it begins traveling through flesh, the Savest continued traveling straight through. Therefore, if you're aiming for a vital, you'll have a better chance of hitting the vital. That one went off. The lead plate is almost 20 pounds and 1 and 1 8 inches thick. And just like ballistic gel, it's just a comparative medium. We can shoot different projectiles at it and see what kind of cavities it leaves behind. Now here again we see the Savest traveling along, it has a little bit of a waggle to it which is pretty common with thin stabilized projectiles. 
Now the, the manufacturer does say these can be shot through a rifled barrel. The Abrams tank has a smooth bore for a reason. They're able to get accuracy out of it without spin stabilization. So it's pretty unlikely you get better accuracy from a rifled barrel with these. Okay, five gallon jug of water. Sweet. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Whoa. <laughs> well, that was a trip. <laughs> What the heck? I hope that got on camera. I think it did. Clink. Whoa. <laughs> now David couldn't send live ammunition to me through the mail, so I had to load these myself using non-existent load data. So because I didn't use the right powder or the right amount of powder, or I had a maybe a little air void in the base of the shell, we didn't get a proper combustion of the powder. So the Sauves left the barrel at probably about 500 feet per second, if that. But we can really see how the Sabos separate from the rear, not from the front, which is kind of interesting. So traveling at a subsonic speed, it was still very stable and still had enough energy to pierce that water jug. And the lead nose snapped off and continued on through that 12 inches of water. Hopefully in the near future we'll have more U.S. distributors of these slugs, companies that I can uh, that are reliable and I could actually recommend to you. But currently they're pretty hard to get. And once again, thank you, David, or is it David? I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but we couldn't have done this without you. He also sent us a bunch of other uh, slugs made in France that we're going to be testing out as well as some other uh, European slugs like the Brennicky and some others I have to do some research on. And we also have another batch of unique shotgun slugs from Russia sent to us by Alexei. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider it. Give us a test drive and see if you like us or not. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Whoa! <laughs> well, that was a trip. <laughs> what the heck? Doggone it.